I think I would say that our rivers aren't where they should be or could be. And uh, the trend specifically for the miles and the Y is a steady, uh, a steady stream of poor performance. You know, I think that there's no denying that our rivers have an excess of nutrients and sediment and it's, it's causing pollution. And what we know from the data that we collect at Shore Rivers is that as you travel upstream, the worse your water quality becomes. So generally that means that all this pollution is coming directly from our own land, from our land practices. To me, that's an opportunity. That means that we can turn that around. So uh, we know that restoration works. We know that we can improve water quality. So this is an opportunity for all of us to do our part and really implement some practices to improve it. Why are we so bad at this? <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think we're bad at it. I mean, I think that there's a lot of legacy nutrients that are making an impact, right? You know, before we really realize that what we're doing has an impact, we were making an impact. So now it's time for us to think about better ways that we can work more with the land. What you really want to do is you want to mimic a dry year, even if it's a wet year. So our water quality is going to spike porous after a major rain event, which is exactly what happened with our last bacteria season collection, right? We had this major rain event with Ida, and so we saw bacteria level spike. And that's because we had all this rain rushing off the land and into the river. And when that happens, it's going to collect every fecal source, every bacteria source, every trash source, and bring it into the river. So we see that spike. Um, so if we can mimic a dry year, even when it's wet, if we can put in practices that are going to capture the water and treat it on land, then we'll generally see an improvement of water quality. A, a goal as Riverkeeper, a goal at Shore Rivers is a swimmable, fishable river, right? And, and I think that everyone has a right to be able to swim in the river. I want to swim in the river. I want to take my baby to swim in the river. And I think that what we're trying to do with this data through our swimmable shore rivers data is to let people make the educated decision based on science, right? Did it meet our water quality standard this week? If it didn't, why is that? Should you be swimming? Let's look at some of the best practices. So generally, we recommend not to swim for 24 to 48 hours after a major rain event. And that can be counterintuitive, right? A lot of people that I talk to think that the best time to swim is after a rain event. But really, it's the opposite. Remember, you got to think that it's all that runoff coming into the river is when you want to avoid water contact. We tell f folks to be really mindful of any open cuts or wounds uh, when you go swimming and to always rinse off after showering or after swimming. So, it, you know, it's unfortunate that you have to have these, these rules in mind, but it's also, I think, part of understanding what's going on in the river. And so we put these results out and hopefully people say, hmm, that looks high. What is that coming from? What can I do about it? And then we have that you know, discussion about proper ways to swim, pick up after your pets, right? Don't leave dirty diapers on the beach. All of those things are fecal sources that can spike that bacteria. Uh, for the Swimmable Shore Rivers program, we collect every Thursday from Labor Day to from Memorial Day to Labor Day. Okay. Um, so we test it weekly. We it takes 24 hours for the results to be processed in the incubator. So what we collect on Thursday is what we post on Friday. And we say that those numbers are valid for 48 hours, right? So we try and capture it for the weekend. It is important to know that it's a snapshot. Right, um, and, and we're not testing for Vibrio, which is what a lot of people think of in bacteria, and that's the flesh-eating bacteria that's in the bay. We're testing for something much more related to E. coli. So it can give you, um, you know, gut infections, swimmer's ears, UTIs, right? It can just make you sick. And we've seen a huge increase in people visiting these public areas because of COVID, right? Yeah. So, I mean, we made it a big priority to expand the program at Shore Rivers we have over 30 sites that we monitor now. In, in my watershed, the Miles and Y, I monitor five. There's always the opportunity to expand. Um, but you know, I, we try and pick areas that are accessible to the public. We try and get public support to fund that, that test. So there are opportunities to further expand, but I think this year we felt like there was even more of a need because of COVID. Everyone was flooding outside. Well, I don't think anyone is swimming right now because of how many jellyfish we have anyway. Yeah. That's another yeah. thing you got to keep an eye yeah. out for. Oh my gosh, they're everywhere right now. So. I